Alright, so we're officially beginning the second chapter of this book, which is basic topology. And <laughs> recall the definition definition of functions, injective functions, surjective functions, and bijective functions. Injective means like so if you have a function that maps from A to B, then if elements from A maps to same element, then we have, then we have, goes to A2, which means that like, this statement is true for any A1, A2, Surjective basically means. Surjective basically means. F. A, is equal to B. Right. Every element is mapped. And bijective, means, means F. This. Bijective means. Is, injective. Now, if there exists a bijective function between sets A and set B, we say that A and B are equivalent and denote as, denote as this. And this thing is an equivalent relation. So by property of bijective functions, we have that the equivalent relation are reflexive means A is equivalent to A. Basically, right, just by the, like F A equals to A is bijective. And reflexive, if A is equal to B, then B is also equivalent to A. And it's transitive means if A is B, B is equal to C, then we have A is equivalent to C. This, this, and by this, these two are equivalent. Okay, basically means there exists a bijective function that puts them together. So now let j be the set of positive integers. And j sub n is integers from 1 to n. So we define a set is a finite set, or there are ma finitely many elements. That means that the set A is equivalent to j sub n for some n. Right. A is equivalent to, we mean A is finite. A is infinite if A is not finite by common sense, or we just define it that way. And we say a set A is countable if A is equivalent to J, and it's uncountable if it's infinite and it's not countable. And we said A is at most countable if A is finite or countable. So we're going to focus on th this definition. What does it mean by a com countable set? Well, well, why we define it this way? So when comparing finite sets, we just count their elements, and then we compare. But when we are dealing with infinite sets, it becomes weird. So we use the bijection to remain its clarity. So one result is that the integers and the positive integers are having the same amount of elements. So for example, you have elements like uh, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the elements uh, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And how come they are equivalent so basically if you put zero negative one one negative two two negative three three one two three four five six and so on if you put
put it in this way. Right? It's a bijection. So we have this. Right. Okay. And now we should define sequences. What are sequences? A sequence is basically a function that maps from the natural numbers or like the positive integers to set A. So if we have f of n equals to x sub n. We denote, we denote the sequence, or we denote the function by fn, and the values are called the terms, and the range is called the sequence in A. But we, we should point out that the terms and sequence, do, they need not to be distinct. You can have like, x sub 2 equals to x sub 17 or something like that but <clears throat> and we connect the definition of sequence and the definition of countable sets so since if set a is countable right if set a is countable then we have a is equivalent to j so there exists a bijective function there's a function that j to a is bijective. Or we can construct a, a, a sequence, right? Whenever a function, no, whenever a set is equivalent to j, then we have a function mass from j to a, which means we have a sequence, gives you a sequence. Right. But sequence, the sequence of distinct terms. Why? Sequence of distinct terms. This is important. Why are they distinct? Because f is bijective. F is bijective means it is, it, it is injective. Which means that if A equals to B is not equal to B, then F A is not equal to F B. Which means that if their subscript is different, then the terms are different because it's bijection. So, when you have a set is countable, then we have a sequence of distinct terms in A. So speaking more loosely, it means that the elements of countable sets can be arranged in a sequence. And this is important. So we should prove our first theorem. Any infinite subset of a countable set is countable. So <laughs> I should prove it. a subset of a countable set is countable. So the A is countable, right? A is countable set. A countable. E is subset of A. E is infinite. Arrange element of A. So now we define, we construct a new sequence. We construct a new sequence. We construct, we construct sequence 
and sub k by so n1 will define it to be the minimum the minimum integer such that x of n1 is in e right so we have we have all of them are in a right and we let the n1 suppose x3 is the first element in e then n1 will be equal to 3 okay now suppose you already see the pattern. Right, suppose for k is equal to two, three, and so on. Right, suppose these are defined, then we define nk as as minimum integer such that such that nk greater than n it should be greater than the last uh term and and we should have right x of nk and e Right, we have this new k. The nk is defined this way. So with such with such n with such sequence we put fk let let a function f k be like this, right? Then f from j to e is a bijection. Bijection. I want to show. Oops. Show as injective. Because they're distinct terms. Right? If they're subscript are the same if they're the same then then their subscript must be the same because they're distinct terms. And also if MP is equal to NQ, we take a look at this thing. This sequence is defined, we make sure that every term is distinct because every term is greater than the previous term. Right. So we have P is equal to Q. Right. And we want to show that F is surjective. How do we show that? So uh, we know for any you know terms in E. Is subset of a, right? So then, then we have x. Then we have r equals to n s for some for 
some like SJ. Because we define it like this. So we have fs equals to x and s equals to xr. So f is bijective, right? Then this is a bijection. If this is a, oops, if this is a bijection, that means j is equivalent to e, which means e is countable. And we're done. Okay, now we use the definition. So we have a as a set, and for every element alpha and a, there is associated set e alpha. And we have this, this to be set of all e alpha, or is like collection of sets, right? So, so we let e k be a sequence of countable sets. Then their union, all their union, is countable. What it's saying is that it's, it's like e is a sequence. E k is a sequence of sets, which means that it's a countable collection of sets, and each set is countable. So we have a countable collection of countable sets, and their union is also countable. Right. So how should we prove it? This. Hmm. So since each so each of them is countable, right? Then we arrange in sequence. Arrange in sequence. So E1 arrange as X11. to x21, x22, x23, x24, blah, blah, blah. e3, x31, e4, x41, x42, x43, x44, so on and so forth, right? Then we let s is equal to like s is equal to all of them, like all of them, like all of them. And now, here's the magic. Go like this. If we go like this, so we have first one, second one, yes, da 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 This way, if we count it like this, then we have a sequence, right? Then we have a new sequence. Even though each E1 has distinct terms, we cannot guarantee that like E1 and E3 or like any two of the E's have all distinct terms. The duplicate may happen. How do we deal with that? Okay. Might. How do we deal with that? 
we have y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, right, arranged like that. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 blah. y, like, 21, right? Say, if y3 is equal to y21, right? Then we have, like, the f3 is equal. is not equal to 21. F is not bijective. Right? Sad. But somehow we can use an algorithm or something. I will present it like below. So if we have if we have YA is equal to YB. Right, then we let k equal to the minimum of them. Okay, right. Or let me think about another way. Oh, that's oh, that one, another one's a lot simpler. So if we have like if we have equal terms, if we have equal terms, right? We just keep the keep the one, keep one, one with minimum index, right? Say, say, say y two equals to y five equals to y. Right, then we let just like k go to two, or just keep the we just keep two, and we the rest got kicked out out from domain. Right. If we have duplicates, we keep the minimum one, and the rest we don't. We just don't define them. And that way, we have S, which is auto sequence here. We have S is equivalent to T, where T is a subset of J. Right. Now we do the reasoning. S. Now we know. Um, we know that S is at most countable. It could be finite and it could be countable, right? If T. Right. It could be finite, it also could be count because T is a subset of J. But E1 is a subset of S. And E1 infinite. E1 subset of S, E1 infinite. S infinite. T infinite. Now we look at above. We look at this one. Infinite subset of a countable set is countable. T infinite. T subset J. J is countable, right? T countable. So T is equivalent to J. I'm so smart. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing is used to show that the rational are not. So we have a combo set A and B and B that sets all like coordinates or set of all intervals where 
each coordinate is an element of A. So let BN be a set of all such tuples. Then BN is countable for all N. So we prove the base case. N equals 1. B1 equals to A is countable. Suppose N is equal to K. Countable. No, that's the other way. I like to use K. In this case, N is countable. We consider K equals to N plus 1. Or This way, we know suppose B of N minus one is countable, right? And now we took a look at B to the N. So, since all elements. form of B A where B B is in it's an N minus one triple. A is in A. Right? They're all N tuples. Guys just take a look at think, right? Now if we we do a function, we do a mapping. So we map if we map this into A. Fix we fix a B. We fix a B. So we fix and minus one tuple. And then we map all N tuples to A. Right? Then, then we have, then we have like all the, all the BAs are equivalent to A, right? Because we fix a B, and then we max all such with the first n minus one terms are fixed, but the last term varies in A, and we map all such tuple into A. Itself, it is a bijection, so it is countable, right? A, since A is countable, so we have B A is countable. Basically, a union of of countable sets, right? It's basically a union, a, a countable union of countable sets. So B is countable. You can think deeper, right? By induction. Earlier, Q is countable. Let's think about B2. Set of like two integers, right? It's like B2. Set of all AB such that AB are integers with B2. 
be. Right. And we know B2 is common. And we know since all, all quote or all rationals can be expressed as this for some A B. Right? So, so like Q is countable. Since B2 is countable. But we know that not all of them are not we can like not open this as can create a uh, vibration between that set and J. So, but A B set of all sequences with the zero number and A is And the technique is called Cantor contour diagonal process. So we let we want to show that so proof let B be a set of A that is countable. So so we know that E consists of sequences. S1, S2, S3, they're all sequences. Right. And now we have S1 is equal to 1, A12, da da da, A13, A21, 22, 23. Three one, three two, three three, and so on. Right. And now here's the, here's like the, fantastic part. We go all the way down with diagonal. We go all the way down. Like we go all the way down. So, if we go all the way down. If this is equal to zero, if like you, you keep you go with like every single one of them, right? And we know how this is and like the terms are like zero or one. So if this is zero, make it equal to one. If this is one, make it equal to zero. If this is equal to one, make it zero. So we get a new sequence. A new sequence. We get a new sequence. Yes. New sequence S starship. Right. Such that we know that it's not equal to S I for any I. Because if you compare if you compare S this and S1, their first term are different. If you compare S star and S2, their second term are different. If you compare S star with Sn, their their nth term is different, right? You just flip between zero and ones. You know, you you get a new sequence. You got, you got this. This is not an E, right? is not an E, but S is, is an A, right? So you have that E is a proper subset of A, right? So we have shown that, we have shown that for any subset of A, is a proper subset of A, right? A is countable. F A is countable. Oh, if like if every countable subset, if E is a countable subset, right? Countable. If A is countable, then A is countable. Is that 
nearly impossible. So we have a is uncountable. Basic topog, no, 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 we just finished the candle and candle thing. And now we have to do some intro about metric spaces. So, usually in analysis, we're not uh, only dealing with the reals. We know that the reals has many good properties, right? Like a triangle in, uh, uh, in quality or something like that. And the definition of metric space is basically motivated by the properties of reals and is another like a general abstraction so let, let, let's look at the definition first so x is a set and the elements are called points and we have a distant function so a distant function from the cartesian product of x into reals such that so basically you have element is equal to r right it's like a distance function you, you put the two points and then you output the distance between them this is a function a distance function and so we have these properties they're, they're not negative and they're zero only when they are equal to each other right the distance between two points like is defined for it equal to zero and they're symmetric. And then we have a triangle inequality. Basically, if you have, right, P, Q, X, right, the distance between them is less than equal to the distance between here and here add up together. The triangle inequality. You know, while the definitions are like general and abstract, but the the metric space we're gonna like mainly focus on is the RK. It's the k-dimensional R space, and then we define distance between them as their as the norm of their difference, and this satisfies the definition of metric. And we also define, we also get to find intervals, k cells, open ball, and a closed ball. So interval is a set A, B, such that, such that distance between, uh, Interval. And the K cells is basically the Cartesian product, K, K Cartesian product of K cells. You have A1, B1, right? <coughs> and an open ball is basically an open ball or a neighborhood a neighborhood or open ball it's like it's like open and it's all the elements inside but the bound but the like the boundary point and a closed ball is like all the all the points inside the region and also the boundary points also the boundary points also the frontiers or right And just let's just stop here for now.